Hi everybody and welcome to another chess tips video where if you give me 10 minutes of your time I will teach you or help you strengthen a chess concept and today we're going to talk about spotting weaknesses. Now weakness in chess the way I like to describe it is either a physical piece that's standing or an empty set of squares that are either not guarded at all or guarded by just something like a king or a queen. So if you take a look at this position in front of you white obviously has a pretty big advantage already up a pawn but the kings are castled on the same side. You start looking around the board, you can actually pause the video and think, where are the weaknesses in this position and what should white play? So in this game I had against the subscriber, I actually played the move h6 in this position. Now the idea of this is that essentially if my opponent takes this pawn, they are weakening the dark squares near the king. And given that I'm the only person with a dark squared bishop, I will have some attacking possibilities. First of all, I'll just very easily be able to go and get that pawn, and my queen will have access to the position. At the same time, if my opponent ignores my pawn and goes here, again, the dark squares become significantly weaker, and I have an opportunity to create a checkmating attack. Now, moves like h6 happen often when the king is the only piece defending pawns that are standing around it. Sometimes if there's a knight or a bishop covering, this sort of thing is not so easy. Now you'll notice this kind of a pawn structure, sometimes there's a dark squared bishop there from like a king's Indian or a different type of opening, uh, and you can trade that dark squared bishop and you will have an advantage. So that's kind of a weakness of an empty set of squares, or if your opponent takes, that's not quite an empty set of squares considering there's a physical pawn there, uh, but you will use this kind of weakness to attack the king. Okay, so in the next example, we're going to take a look at a game that I had. Uh, I was playing with the black pieces here. This was many, many years ago. Uh, and my opponent in this position had a very nice advantage from the opening and began an attack on the dark squares. How do you notice that the dark squares are weak? Well, if a person has a bunch of pawns on the light squares like this, most likely the opposite color square will be weakened. You know, if this pawn's even here, that already is a little bit of a balance. But if there's a bunch of pawns on the same color square, then the corresponding uh, square, set of squares, I should say, will be a little bit weaker. And so in this position, to secure a really big grasp on e5 and potentially get a knight there to do a lot of damage, uh, queen g3 was played. Now that move attacks the knight in the corner with knight d7, knight f3. And that's exactly what my opponent is planning to do. So I tried to fight back here with the move knight h5, but my opponent found a very nice tactical continuation. It's also important to note that when you have such a dominance over like a set of squares, like for example the dark squares which will lead to the king, that will ultimately result in you being too able to attack actual pawns or potentially change your game plan entirely and attack uh, the other you know color of square. So if you're attacking on the dark squares, it's going to be too hard to control and the light squared weakness is going to pop out. So knight e5 check takes and now my opponent takes this because it was attacking his knight the dark square control is still very significant he trades and again the king is wide open now the king can be considered a weakness but it's you know the, the king is only considered weak if there is a direct way to attack it right now it's not so obvious how you're going to attack this king but you notice it's stuck on the f file so if the king is stuck on the f file how are we going to get to the king Correct, you are going to play the move f3, and you have to open up this position and attack with your rook, or potentially short castles. Now that's a pawn play idea, but we'll have a video on pawn play in and of itself. Uh, but in the game, you'll notice that I try to castle by hand, but notice what I said about so many pawns on the same color square, six light squared pawns, it means that the dark squares are really weak. So what does my opponent do here? Well, first he kind of baits my queen to an awkward square, and then he tries to open the position. But right here, he plays a very important move. My last defender of the dark squares is the dark squared bishop, and so he offers a trade. And using this dominance on the dark squares, he will then bring in his queen and put pressure on all of my other weaknesses. So when you have such a dominance and the king is such a weakness, you need to try to find ways to trade off the pieces that cover those squares, and then open up the lines and get to the king. I ended up losing this game in very con in very convincing fashion, I would say. Uh, so just wanted to show a game where I was kind of on the, uh, the receiving end of a beatdown. Uh, in the next game, um, I actually had the black pieces 
and this is another game against a, a subscriber. It's just out of the opening, but here my opponent played the move a4. And so a4 tries to stop me from playing the move b5. That's the direct idea of this move, a4. What does a4 weaken? And for the next few examples, we're not going to be talking about a weak king, but we will be talking about weak squares and how they can damage something in the middle game. So the move a4 weakens this square. Now, if I just go there and start attacking stuff, he has a tactic because my king is still stuck in the center of the board. So that would not work. So what I did in the game is that I castled and then I set up this move. So my opponent played rook b1 and I played rook c8. I could have just played queen before, but I played rook c8. And on the next move, I played queen before. So my queen stands on that square. It's a, it's a, it's a very firm grasp. It would be much better for him if his pawn was here. And there is pressure on all three of these pawns. I then use the C file to stack my pieces. And then right here, another instructive moment, my opponent played B3. That move puts three pawns on light squares. So they're all defending each other. However, when that pawn push happened, he significantly weakened the knight on C3. So black to move. You can pause the video here. You can try to find a tactic. As a result of that move, the knight has a lot less cushion and the queen is pressuring. That rook is pressuring, queen takes d4. Now, knight takes d4 is also possible, and the idea is basically this. If this trade happens, at the end of it, that last pawn move weaken this, then we get in and we're doing damage. The other examples, we were taking advantage of weak pieces or squares and trying to get to a king. In this example, we are doing uh, something more along the lines of a, of a middle game, okay? We are just trying to get to... Uh, well, I, I should say, we're not trying to get to the king. We're just trying to pick up a little bit of material. In the next game, I also had the black pieces, and I was playing against a very strong grandmaster, uh, Lazaro Brazon, and I just played the move g5. And then for the next seven or eight moves, he made me look like an absolute amateur. So first things first, this is a more advanced version of creating a weakness, but he fights against these pawns, and makes me make my f pawn weak. So watch what he plays. f4. See, I don't understand how this is such a problem. Well, I took, he captures this way, and now I have a bit of a difficult situation. Because if I take like this, he, plays, he, he takes with the knight, and my pawn is isolated and weak, and he's controlling the light squares in the territory. So instead of doing that, what I played was e4. So what is the weakness in this position? The weakness is this pawn. You say, okay, how is he ever going to attack that? Well, first things first, he chips away at d3 with d3 at my e4 pawn. But using pawn play gets that defense out of the way. I try to reinforce and create some tactics on this diagonal. So he plays bishop here, hits my rook. And you might say, well, how does that make any sense? Why would he make your rook come this way? Because that move allowed him to defend his queen with his rook, and then he takes, and now the very natural move pawn takes e4, right? Because otherwise my pawn is just collapsing. He trades the queens and offers me a trade of rooks. And he's doing this because I'm not very developed on this side of the board. So I declined the trade. Now, if you've been focusing in this video, you can very easily figure out where are the weaknesses? Where are the weaknesses in the black position? They are not really empty squares. You could say that this is a weakness. It's kind of a weakness. Where are the physical weaknesses in this position for the black side? That and that. Now watch how simply he destroys me using the concept of positional weaknesses. Very simple move, bishop h3. How am I going to defend against knight to d4? Well, if I play knight to c6, this weakness, he hops in, and there's just simply no way for me to defend it. And when he takes on c7, I'm just going to lose. Let's not forget, rook e7, there is this. So by playing bishop h3, he puts me in an extremely uncomfortable position. So I played c6 to prevent knight d5, but then he just played knight d4. I tried to get in the way of this bishop. And when he makes this trade, he gives me a new weakness. So just very effortless play here from from Bruzon. he just trades the bishop for the knight and in doing so dislodges the defender and that's it there's just no way for me to guard this pawn effortless play and he wins the pawn and then he went on to win a completely easy game you can see this game i played it in 2016 millionaire open here in uh on the east or east coast of the united states it was not a very good game it was my worst game of the tournament and he made me look like a fool and he did it with very simple play fixed my pawn and then chipped away at my pawn structure and left me with a very, tar you know, a very easy uh, target on f5. Now let's say you've gotten this far in the video 
And whether it's attacking the king or just attacking a structure, we're going to use this as a test position. Take a look at this position. It's a queenless middle game with uh, one set of minor pieces traded, bishop for knight. I had this position against a good friend of mine and subscriber, Kings Indian 2200. Black to move. How would you take advantage of the weaknesses in white's position? And really, where are the weaknesses? How do, how do you see through all these pieces and, and, find the, and, and find the weaknesses in the position? The weaknesses are going to be right here. Those two central pawns. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what I played. I took, and regardless of how my opponent was going to capture, I opened up this file, and my next move was going to be long castles with some pressure. He went like this, I traded, and I figured that he wouldn't take with the rook. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but if I just castle, it's very awkward to defend this pawn. He actually doesn't really have a convenient way to do it, uh, because if he brings out his king, I'm pretty sure this rook is going to get trapped. Just can't go back anymore. So he took with the pawn, and obviously I long castled, and here he attacked my bishop. So you look around the position and you go, what's weak? Well, I only see one thing that's weak, and it's this. So I attacked it. Well, how does he defend it? I mean, he can go rook e2, he can go rook f1. In the game, he chose knight e4, but this move created a new weakness, the e5 pawn. And I played bishop d4, and actually it's, it's, it's sort of rare you have a, a central fork like this, but black is simply winning a pawn here, and after winning this pawn, everything else in the position collapsed. That move, pawn push, weakens the bishop, and so if he had played something like h3, this is a weakness. I told you at the very beginning, right? The very beginning. Just because something is only guarded by the king, doesn't mean it's guarded. That can very well be a weakness, and bishop a6 here picks up this material, because if rook e3, there's more tactics. So the bishops are just super, super vicious in this position. Now, I actually didn't play the, the, the right approach. Actually, in this position, there's a really, really cool idea to destroy my opponent on the dark squares. He does not have a dark squared bishop, so check out this. I can make this trade, and then in this position, to attack the central pawns, I have a very cool move, c5. So basically, if he takes this, I take this, and I win the knight because of the pin, right? If he, like, pushes or something, well, then this, this is just a free pawn, okay? And if he takes this way, again, the central pawns are falling. So something like knight e5, and there's a threat of this, and there's a threat of this, and black is simply winning a pawn. So bishop takes f3 and c5 is a way you combine the most advanced kind of weaknesses in chess, which are like not even empty square or physical weaknesses, but color scheme weaknesses. Like, you remove the knight uh, with bishop takes f3, which is a very strange move because it opens up the rook, but these dark squared pawns in the center don't have a way of being well protected. Well, that was a lot of examples. Let me know your thoughts uh, on weaknesses, maybe what, uh, what you might think your biggest weakness is when it comes to chess in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.